all yours Make no mistake about it, I'm all yours I can no longer play it calm and cool Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Sacramento, California-based jazz singer Beth Duncan. We caught up with her in late June 2020 during the COVID-19 shutdown of Jazz as We Know It to discuss her latest 2020 CD, I'm All Yours. Beth sang early and often in school singing clubs, musical theater, church chair, and always knew she was destined to be a solo artist. It all started with a chance stop at a local radio station with a drummer friend of hers, and it was in 2001 that she got back into the music scene. It's a great story. She's going strong now. Get to know her. How's everything going? Oh, oh, other than the world coming to an end and the pandemic and, you know, racial unrest and Oh my 14, God. I'm, do, I'm healthy and I, I'm blessed and, and I'm actually doing fine in the middle of all of this. So better than I'm sure many people. So I, I feel thankful for that. You know, it's, it's a bizarre time. I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's a definite crossroads of, of a lot of things. I think there's been a lot of this, that's, uh, especially with the racial unrest, which I think is going to kind of turn into a more of a class war of the haves and have nots. I think it's long overdue and um, hopefully we can just get some things that are positive that come out of it, you know, that's the hope. I really do. Yeah. I hope it is some true change, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I figure talking about music is probably the best thing to do right now. So with all of this in mind with the COVID-19 and the way the world is, before we get into your new album, talk to me a little bit about early to mid-March when everything started getting canceled for you. When did you start realizing we were getting to a grinding halt? You know, I think at first I thought this was going to be short-lived. I, I guess a little bit, that's kind of a little bit of that, you know, Pollyanna thinking. Um, but then I realized quickly that every gig that I had was gone. And uh, even some long-range gigs that I had into the summer are looking still iffy and even into the fall. So it kind of slowly crept on and I became aware that this was going to be the new natural for the moment at least for some time to come it, it was pretty it, it was and is kind of depressing i miss live music so much both as a, a performer but also as a, as a fan uh, i was emceeing a lot of jazz concerts for the sacramento jazz cooperative here in town and uh, there's different things that go on every summer with the crocker art gallery where we have you know, music scenes going on. It's just there's so much music, and it, it, the garage door just shut down. So now it's like, wow, what's next? Well, where are we, Joe? What are we, <laughs> what are we going to be doing a year from today? I guess that's what I'm starting to think about. Well, I think that's the thing about this is that I think in the beginning, I know having kids in school, this started in Missouri around the time that spring break happened, and they were like, all right, we'll see you on the 8th of April and everybody's like, yeah, great. And then, then we'll see you on the 24th because it got deeper. And then the governor just called school off. And then now the kids can't even go to summer school. It's like everything progressively is getting to a point where it's, it's getting worse and worse, you know, and then now they're saying there's going to be all these additional waves and it's like, they just, there, there's just no good news. And the only thing I think that was a brief respite from anything was the fact that we were, you know, kind of focused on the fact that, there were all these riots and there was all this stuff going on. So, so yeah, talk to me about the new album. What's it like to have a album come out during a pandemic? Well, I thought about shelving it even after I'd put more than two years of work into it. It, you know, somehow it felt like celebrating something like a new album wasn't quite the thing to do at the moment. Uh, but then I just, I changed my mind. I said, this, this, this whole thing was made. Um, out of love and great musicians and music, and it was meant to be released. And I'm going to let the music and I'm going to let the love win out in this situation because I think we need it now more than ever. Uh, as I was just really getting into the thick of everything right after the first of the year, that process after the music's done, you know, but then you've got to duplicate and you've got a, a gazillion, your list is really long. <laughs> That's kind of when the work really all begins. So the more I got into the project and what I needed to complete, the more aware I became of the fact that there was going to be no place to do a CD release concert. And so it, it really is an interesting situation. But I decided that music wins and loves win, 
and I'm just going forward. So I love the project, and I'm excited about the music. When I'll get to play live again is a big question mark, but um, I'm still excited uh, about the project. Well, what do you hope that the audience realizes about this time away from jazz? What kind of silver linings do you hope they get and, and come back with whenever we do get back to live music? Thankfulness, <laughs> gratitude that we have such amazing musicians all around us in every city, in every state, in every country. And maybe that they, we, they, us, we appreciate the art form more than we ever have before. And uh, we take our wallets out and we spend money on, on the art that musicians make. And we don't think twice about spending 15 20 $30 on a ticket to see someone, not a superstar necessarily, someone that's a fantastic musician that lives very close to you. Uh, I, I hope we become more grateful and aware of how many amazing musicians are just right here in our midst. And I hope we support uh, the great American art form more than ever once we're able to. Hey, Beth, thank you for taking a minute out. I really kind of wanted to just talk about the album and this strange, surreal world. So thank you for catching me up. I look forward to spending you on the show, and stay safe. I thank you so much for giving me a call. I really appreciate it. Stay safe out there, and I, I hope we'll all soon be hearing live jazz. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Sacramento, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Beth for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Won't you be mine? Neon Jazz.